we find a lot of organizations really struggle to get traction with data governance. And even if they have executives who really understand the value of data governance and are very supportive of the program, quite often they still struggle to get the results that they want. And a lot of it has to do with these aspects here we have on the screen. So these execution components. So this is how we get things done. This is the machine of data governance. And a lot of organizations don't spend enough time clarifying exactly how we are going to execute things uh, within the data governance program. How are we going to make decisions? You know, something that simple can be so confusing and so frustrating, especially for executives. We pull them into a, a data council meeting and then we haven't really sorted out how we are going to operate and then they get frustrated. And with frustration, you, you lose confidence in the program. And a lot of programs struggle from that perspective. So for execution components, all the way from the strategy, all the way down to those operating procedures, we need them well-defined. We don't need to go overboard. We just need to define exactly what we need to, to make things operate based on the scale of, of our program. And Josh is gonna expand on these, all of these uh, in the next few slides. So second, we have our program approach. We can't manage this as a project. There's no end date to this. Ultimately, we, we're starting off. We need to identify some quick wins, identify how can we mitigate those risks as quickly as possible using the resources we have. And that is a concept we call MBG or minimal valuable governance. It might not be pretty. It might not be efficient, but at least you're doing what you need to mitigate those risks. You know, you don't get... You don't have a data breach or you're you know, managing quality as best you can uh, based on the capabilities you have. And next, uh, for me, this is one of the most important parts at all, all together. And I think this is why a lot of organizations struggle. They don't accept that data governance is a cultural transformation. And because of that, we need to be very adept at change management. And we need to understand the culture of our organization. We need to understand the mindsets of the individuals. We need to understand the history. We need to understand the traditions. And most especially, we need to understand the power relationships. So these are different than the reporting relationships. There's people who have more power than others, even in, in the same position. We need to understand those so we can either use those to help us or mitigate some of the roadblocks that may come with those power relationships. And as I said, Josh will go a little more into some of those details in a few slides. Lastly, as I mentioned before, we need intelligence. Metadata is the fuel of data governance. So we need to build that data intelligence, start gathering the information. If you're starting with a project, you contain the scope of your data intelligence to mapping out the data that's coming into that project and managing the risk and optimizing the value of that by implementing stewards and standards and, and things like that. But if you don't have that metadata available, you're flying blind. And to sustain metadata is very difficult. So we've had lots of projects where We've uh, built a data catalog in you know, a SharePoint list or an Excel spreadsheet, and you know, it becomes obsolete as soon as you're done. And th there's more and more data, more and more metadata. So it's, being very, it's very difficult to tackle all of that in, in a way that's sustainable. And that's where we uh, want to look at some tools to help 